With the huge buff to loot and fame, one thing you definitely want to do is roam the open world of Albion. When your friends are offline and your roaming party consists of only you, what build do you play? Today I'm going to show you what I think is the best solo build you can play in Albion Online as a newer player. And because this build is for newer players, I did base it off a few criteria which are as follows. In my opinion, as a new player, you want a build to be cheap. It's likely that you are going to die more often than an experienced player as you go about learning the game. Therefore, your loadout should be as cheap as possible so you can re-gear without having to worry. A second important thing would be the flexibility of the build. Especially when you are playing in the open world, you may find yourself jumping from content to content. You might start off by doing solo dungeons, have a small treasure chest spawned in your area, which you would like to contest, and you might just hop into a portal that leads to the roads of Avalon to farm some chests there. So the build you decide to play should be good for various types of content. And the third thing about the build would be its PvP potential. The content you are going to do in the open world will have PvP risk to it once you start roaming the red and black zones. Now the blue and yellow zones are safe to play in as they don't have the full loot aspect to them. And you can already start playing this build there as well. But the higher loot and fame is to be found in the red and black zones, which do feature the full loot system. And there you want to stand your ground against other players. So the build you play should also have PvP potential, aside from being cheap and flexible. And that is the exact type of build I will share with you today. If you are new to the channel, my name is Levy and I help Albion players such as you become better at the game. If you want to be ahead of everyone else when it comes to improving, make sure you are subscribed and tap that notification bell. Today's build features the regular spear which makes for a melee playstyle with plenty of damage, great mobility and even some sustain. Not only will I show you the build and explain everything about it, I will also teach you about item swaps and improvements and inform you about which abilities you should take for specific content. I know that sounds quite overwhelming but towards the end of this video everything will make sense. And if it doesn't, you can always ask your questions in the comments. The great thing about today's build is that you don't need high levels of masteries before you can start playing it. So it's perfect for any new player that likes this type of playstyle as you can use this build the moment you unlock P4. With a price tag of only 22k for a 4.1 excellent set, this build definitely falls under the cheap category. Together with a mount, food and potions, the complete loadout will cost you about 50k silver. So what about the flexibility of this build? You can play it in a wide variety of content and shuffle between the various contents as you are roaming around. It's good for solo dungeons, roads of Avalon, getting mobs in the open world, essence farming, contesting treasure chests, and whatever solo content you set your eyes on. As for the PvP potential, it can definitely stand its ground in a 1 versus 1 scenario, but I wouldn't push it beyond that. Since this build has a combination of damage and sustain, you will have a clear advantage over many of your enemies. And thanks to the mobility and the utility within this build, you get to decide how most of the fights will play out. So if this build has your interest, you definitely want to listen carefully to everything that follows. In general, you want to play this build by taking Lunging Strike on your Q and Forest of Spears on your W. You will have Reckless Charge on your E, and for the passive you want to take Life Leech. The reason we go with the regular spear over any other spear is because of Reckless Charge. This ability is good for a number of things. First, it acts as a mobility skill so you can use it as a tool to escape or chase someone down. The second great thing about it is that it has a knock-up to it which means it acts as a crowd control and can be used to interrupt your enemies. So if you see someone casting something big, you can interrupt their cast with this ability. And finally, you should know that the amount of damage this ability does is based on your charges which you build up with your Q ability. So read all of your abilities carefully to know exactly what they do and how they synchronize with each other. As for your armor pieces, you take the Hunter Hood, Mercenary Jacket and Soldier Boots. The passives you just saw with each of these pieces are also the passives you want to take when going about playing this build. Important to know is that with the changes to the Mercenary Jacket, you have to combo it properly to get the maximum out of it. This is your biggest source of sustain. So what you want to do when you need healing is pop the Bloodlust ability of your Mercenary Jacket and use your W ability, Forest of Spears, to make the healing proc 7 times. 
Follow this by a Q and an auto attack and you will have utilized the mercenary jacket to its fullest. If you don't use this combo as mentioned, it's going to be very difficult or maybe even impossible to get all 9 procs of healing within the window the buff lasts for. Your hunter hood is mostly for PvP as it protects damage back at the attacker, but you should definitely use it for PvE as well as it will increase your DPS and make you more tanky. As for your soldier boots, this is your biggest source of mobility which you can use to escape or chase someone down. As said prior, this is the ability setup you take when playing this build in general, but for specific content you want to change up your abilities. When doing PvE content without the risk of PvP, such as solo dungeons, the only change you want to make within your abilities is on your boots. You won't need Wanderlust within solo dungeons as there is no risk of PvP once the dungeon closes. Therefore, you are much better off swapping to Rejuvenating Sprint which will move you around much quicker within the dungeons whilst also adding more healing to this build. If you don't need the healing, you can also take Run for even more mobility. As for PvP content, you should know that the versatility of spares comes from the fact that all of the W abilities are viable based on what you need in a particular moment. So ideally, you would swap the W ability that will serve you best within a certain matchup. But you should know that some of the abilities are unlocked at higher levels and you will need to spend some time with the spares first before you can use them. Impaler is the most commonly used ability as it does a good chunk of damage, slows the targets down and is a ranged ability on top of that. If you want to keep enemies close to you, you want to use Harpoon to pull your enemies towards you. Deflecting Spin adds another reflect to this build serving as both defense and offense at the same time. Ripple is only good in specific situations where your target has movement speed buffs such as those that use the sword. Inner Focus can be useful in a lot of different situations and is probably the most versatile one in the list. And Forest of Spears might actually be the hardest one to pull off as it will require your target to stand still, which is hard to manage when you don't have any crowd control. And since your source of sustain through the Mercenary Jacket relies on Forest of Spears, what should you do with your armor when it comes to PvP? Now you can still use the Forest of Spears and Mercenary Jacket combo even in PvP, but it's very likely that you would benefit more from another W ability. So if you do change your W ability, you also want to change the ability on your armor. All the land armors have the Infernal Shield as a shared ability and it's very great for PvP as it increases your resistances and reflects damage back at the attacker. So my suggestion would be to either stay on the Bloodlust Forest of Spears combo or to change to any other W ability and Inferno Shield. Now let's go over viable item swaps for this build and possible improvements to make this build even better. First and foremost, you can swap your regular cape out for various faction capes to improve this build big time. Two great options are the Tatford cape if you want more damage and the Undead cape if you want more open world survivability. But do know that changing to a faction cape will make this build much more expensive. Nonetheless, if you do want to improve this build, you definitely want to start by adding a faction cape. If you notice you need more defense in PvE, you can swap to the Guardian Helmet. This one will also serve you in PvP, so it's not the biggest change to the build other than going full defense on your helmet instead of having an ability that provides a bit of both worlds. Another thing you can do to create open world survivability while simultaneously adding utility to this build is swapping the mercenary jacket for the assassin jacket. If you want to play with a more PvP focus in the open world, this would be a great change. By also swapping your W ability to the most preferred option in a given moment, you will have a very PvP focused build with these changes. In conclusion, the regular spear is a very versatile weapon which makes it great for the open world that makes for many forms of content at once. You can easily jump from content to content with this build and be successful both in the PvE and PvP. Because of the mobility and utility of this build, you will also have a fair chance of escaping when you need to do so. If I were a new player to Albion Online, this would be the build I would play when roaming solo. If you think this video was helpful, please give it a like to make it reach other players as well. Take care and I'll see you next time.